Hello, Mike. Hello, Sarah. Uh, we're going to be talking about CMR Plus, mm -hmm. which is Antwerp's IDP solution. It is. Um, perhaps you could set the scene by explaining what IDP is and why organizations should know about it. Okay, well, um, uh, IDP, Intelligent Document Processing, uh, it's quite interesting being surrounded by books here because yeah. it reminds us that uh, unstructured data, the way humans communicate, uh, whether it's through paper or emails, images, uh, and even audio, um, are very difficult for machines to interpret. And Intelligent Document Processing and our CMR Plus product is really designed to help large organizations uh, to automate the reading and extraction of data from all of those documents and forms and contracts and um, bills of lading, all of the things that underpin every industry. And uh, we're very good at that. So that's a good segue into my next question, which is what's special about CMR Plus? Well, we're very proud of our um, cognitive machine reading, CMR Plus, because it's designed for the citizen developer. This idea that um, a business user should be able to automate the documents they read every day. Mm -hmm. So we've designed it to be uh, easy and intuitive to use uh, so that um, uh, a business user can take uh, a document that they would normally uh, process or and extract data from on a daily basis and configure our solution uh, very easily to find the data that they would be looking for, extract that and transform it into uh, a structure that can then go into the back-end systems. Well, that's, again, a very good point to delve into, mm -hmm. particularly with regards to use cases. So mm -hmm. what kind of use cases would you recommend it for? Uh, well, the use cases, it's quite, it's, uh, it's quite interesting. So from a citizen developer point of view, um, uh, we have a client who is a major bank in the United States, uh, and they've really adopted this idea of citizen developer. So uh, there we've trained 30 people in their business risk function, and actually they're selecting documents uh, across the portfolio of processes that they run uh, and automating those. So these are um, typical bank risk documents, semi-structured, completely unstructured. Uh, on the other hand, we have another client where we're processing documents which can be 600 pages long um, and extracting data from those. So it's a very broad church from, uh, from invoice all the way up to um, a, a substantial contract. Mm -hmm. And that has to be right because if we're building a platform that can be used by organizations uh, across their portfolio of processes and documents, then it has to have a broad church, the ability to automate um, documents and the extraction of data from documents uh, that take the simple to the complex. So talking of organizations, are there some organizations that are better suited to adopting CMR Plus than others? Or? Well, I think that's, that's an issue. I mean, the, the reality is um, our, our product, CMR Plus, is neither industry or document or process specific, and that's, mm -hmm. that's the idea. But um, it's quite interesting. The most demand we see for our product is in the insurance, banking, and manufacturing sectors. Mm -hmm. But if you think about it, um, and, and I was talking to a client uh, last week about uh, ESG, mm -hmm. uh, this idea that um, what is my carbon footprint? So uh, the ability to use our product to take a document that comes with goods coming into the goods inwards depot uh, and be able to extract where has this product come from, um, uh, uh, how far has it traveled, um, is the you know, at, you know the, the key point of entry tells you what your carbon footprint is in your supply chain. And um, you know, using, for example, our CMR Plus product in that space, it would be applicable to any industry. Mm -hmm. uh, but as I say, the uh, biggest demand and the biggest investment in the IDP today, we're seeing in banking, insurance, and in manufacturing. But ESG, on top of things like um, insurance documents makes it quite a versatile application. And that's application. absolutely, yeah. ex that's yeah. exactly, exactly yeah. the idea. Uh, and you know, so we want to put our product, CMR Plus, in the hands of clients, particularly in their uh, automation center of excellence to work alongside robotic process automation and other tools that they might use to drive automation. Um, and we want to be able to give it to partners who can take it and deliver those services for clients, uh, but also to build their mm -hmm. own uh, point solutions that they can sell into the market. So, uh, you know, we see IDP as a core component of a broader solution, and uh, we want to make sure that uh, we're providing our services to empower uh, those uh, offerings. Right, right. Um, let's talk about its benefits. Maybe mm -hmm. you could 
give some examples of what your customers yeah. have achieved. Well, I think it's quite, it's quite interesting that everyone immediately thinks of intelligent document processing along with automation being about cost reduction. But what we actually see is uh, something very different. Mm -hmm. but the first thing to notice is there are often uh, automating processes which don't currently take place. Uh, that's because um, it's quite expensive having humans reading contracts, for example. So it's often a, a sampling process. So what we see is clients actually is taking uh, our products and starting to look at 100%. Now what that means is that um, you're looking at, you're collecting a lot more data. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, uh, but at a fraction of the uh, cost of uh, human processing. So uh, this productivity gain is huge. Uh, so you have to decide whether that's a cost takeout or an ability to harness and uh, take on more data. What we also see is um, quality, is that uh, despite our best efforts as humans, um, we are not terribly accurate when it comes to doing routine repetitive work. Mm -hmm. And so if you've got resources that are looking at particular documents uh, for a large part of the day, extracting key data points, their level of accuracy could be as low as 80, 85%. Mm -hmm. So uh, we see levels of accuracy uh, well beyond 90%, uh, but with the addition of human in the loop, checking uh, where there is low confidence in the data extracted, that the reality is you can get to 100%. And uh, that's what our clients are looking for. And, uh, and uh, uh, you know, the versatility of our extraction uh, capability alongside um, working with uh, you know, super users or your your best staff to uh, do the checking can give you a lot of confidence in the quality of the mm. data. So coming back to your, your point, we, see, we, we do see either cost takeout or increasing productivity. We see improved quality and uh, therefore lower operational risk. The additional rev, um, uh, data is drive to new product offerings and uh, new value creation. The risk element, I would think, is huge, you know, reducing, mitigating risks of Correct. Wrong yeah. clauses or errors. Yeah, you know, and the really. ability to compare. So you mm. can you can look at it one contract and um, a, a clause in in one contract and compare it with another contract, um, and to uh, ensure that the, the um, uh, risk coverage within the contract is is appropriate for your uh, your risk appetite. So uh, there are lots of applications, and um, you know, we're very you can tell we're very excited about it. Uh, we're going to focus on the AI, the artificial intelligence yes. part of CMR Plus. And we all know that skills are in terribly short supply, uh, particularly to do anything to do with AI. So do your clients have to have AI scientists or any other kind of AI specialists in order to get started with CMR Plus? Definitely not. Right. The whole principle of uh, CMR Plus is it's uh, designed to allow uh, ordinary business users to configure uh, uh, to extract data from the documents they read every day. So if they require some sort of degree in artificial intelligence, that would defeat us, I think, and, and indeed them. So the idea is it's a low-code, no-code solution. But what that really means is that um, uh, a business user can configure a series of tools behind which, of course, there are algorithms mm -hmm. and, um, um, and, uh, and, and business rules. Uh, but the, the, the uh, the uh, business user doesn't need to worry about that. But there's a series of tools that emulate how they would find information in a document. So the way I think about it is, um, if you've got a 50-page document uh, and you're looking for key pieces of information, albeit that they, it may appear anywhere in the document, um, a practiced uh, business user will, or certainly I would speed read, they'd flip through the pages. And they intuitively almost know mm -hmm. that there's a paragraph here which has the shape and the look of uh, um, the kind of paragraph that would contain the information they need. So what you can do is use the tools that we have, which are simple to use, to actually uh, identify the paragraph with the information that you want and extract the data that you need. So no, no data science required at all. Uh, there is a need sometimes because um, in, in uh, very uh, complex documents, or a very specific information that the client might need is um, we have a capability for a super user or more of a developer to refine and build in uh, algorithms uh, on a software development kit, as it's called, uh, to, uh, to uh, extract really refined information from a document. And that requires somebody with more development skills, but not necessarily um, data science. Okay. Are there any skills that you would recommend beyond those? for the teams that are involved to have. Um, 
I think I think the important thing is people really understand the documents that they're right. uh, yeah. that they're processing because mm -hmm. um, uh, the same as you will know and in, in these books the same information can be conveyed in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. So you need to have a uh, someone with a good level of expertise uh, to be able to configure the solution. And I'm, by that I mean expertise in the um, as they call it, the semantics and the heuristics of the of their industry. So the the uh, industry language and the specific data that they need, and an understanding of the back end system for the back end systems of how that data is going to be transformed. Because when you think about it, if you read something in a book uh, or a document, uh, and and you want to make notes or put information into a system, it, almost certainly the information you put into that system or write down will be in a in a different form. It'll be conveying that information in a summarized way in a different form. And so um, the, the, uh, the business uh, practitioner needs to be able to uh, help our uh, uh, CMR Plus understand that transformation. So to summarize, uh, no particular AI skills, uh, not even data scientists, but you have to know your documents and exactly. you have to know the Correct. kind of information yes. that yeah. you want to capture. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's been a lot of excitement about chat GPT. Oh, I knew this was going to come. Yes. <laughs> yes. So is it at all relevant to CMR Plus and can they be used together? Uh, hugely relevant. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, of course, it's all relatively new. Uh, but we see um, a tremendous opportunity in uh, chat GPT and, mm -hmm. and large language models. Uh, uh, and already we've released a version of uh, CMR Plus with add ons uh, which make use of these technologies. Uh, but very quickly, you'll see uh, I, um, intelligent document processing morphing and expanding its scope. So uh, our vision for document processing, and we'll have to find a new acronym, I suspect, is uh, a much more intuitive uh, uh, solution, which extends the ability of um, CMR Plus uh, to provide uh, more uh, research and analysis and querying and summarization of uh, information in a single document and ultimately in a portfolio of documents mm. uh, including sort of comparison of, uh, of uh, documents and clauses in a way in which it probably shifts the emphasis of where CMR plus is being deployed from hitherto the uh, middle and back office to more of a uh, workbench for um, for business users at, at, um, uh, at in, in, in the front office if you like uh, so, for example, rather than the back office of an um, insurance company or an uh, insurance broker, you would be actually uh, working more closely with the underwriter who's able to query and access the documents that um, underpin a particular risk. That makes the whole process faster and... Um... Faster and, and, uh, and uh, uh, it really will become a, a support uh, a tool for people looking to make uh, critical decisions quickly. So really good augmentation as well Absol as automation. Ab absolutely, yes. absolutely. Yes. Really exciting times ahead with that. It, yes. it, it yes. is, and uh, you know, we, we've, we've really taken to it. And uh, my teams um, in our development centers in Chennai and Bangalore are busy at the moment running right. workshops right. And, um, and doing new, new, you know, creating new designs. And uh, in, maybe we could just talk about data privacy then as yes. well. What, what sort of safeguards are there within the application? Well, the, um, the, the, the beauty of our application is that the, a, a document comes in, it's processed, data is extracted, and it goes out of our system into, uh, into, into the files in the enterprise um, uh, and presented in any way the client wants it. But then the system's purged, so we don't actually hold any data. And that's very important because that uh, allows us to engage with clients with, um, uh, with concern for, but not um, uh, necessarily any uh, responsibility in, the, in aspects like GDPR. Mm -hmm. uh, because, the, um, because we don't hold any personal mm -hmm. data. The, um, from, a, from a kind of an infrastructure and storage you know, uh, and, and run perspective, uh, it's quite interesting the majority of our clients uh, are running our solution on-premise or on, on their private cloud. Uh, and, and that means that uh, you know they're, they're assured of the, their protections, particularly as we're working in a lot in insurance and banking. Right. Thank you, Mike. That's all right.